focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to the Financial Advisor Awards 2014-15 presented by UTI Mutual Fund and CNBC TV18. I'm Sumit Lakotia. Now the Financial Advisor Awards were instituted to honor advisors who have worked tirelessly to ensure wealth creation for the Indian investor through wise investment plans, sound advice and product recommendations. Throughout this season, we've spoken to experts across the country to better understand changes in the regulatory regime and how best to adapt to the new environment. We've also discussed challenges, issues and the way ahead. Today, this season culminates in the jury round with promising candidates pitching to judges to stand out as winners in the prestigious Financial Advisor Awards 2014-15. An esteemed panel of judges will determine the outcome of the selection process through a rigorous round of presentations and Q&A sessions with hopeful nominees. On the panel are Ruchi Karla, Associate Partner, McKinsey & Company, Vibhar Mittal, Assistant Vice President, Ikra, Piyush Dalmia, Partner, McKinsey & Company, V. Bala Subramaniam, Chief Business Officer, BSE, Kalpesh Gada, Senior Vice President, Ikra, Karthik Srinivasan, Senior Vice President, Ikra, Sanjay Panse, Senior Partner, S. Panse & Company, L. Shiv Kumar, Executive Vice President, Ikra, Sandeep Sabarwal, Ex-Director, Chrysal, Uma Shashikant, MD, Center of Investment, Education & Learning, Suparna Biswas, Associate Partner, McKinsey & Company, AP Kurian, Ex-Amphi. As you think about the importance of the, uh, the financial awards, uh, to me, this is the only award which sort of goes out to the distribution community uh, to a large extent. Uh, this community is extremely important. Uh, as you look at what is happening to this community, it's shrinking from about 80,000 to 1 lakh. Uh, it's now sort of about 40, 50,000 sort of active IFAs in the market today. Uh, it's important that we recognize them because they play a very important and critical role in building wealth. I think this award does a great job in sort of providing them the right platform, allowing them to come and showcase what great work they're doing, and sort of recognizing them as well. I think the Financial Advisors Award is a very aspirational thing for someone to have. At a time when, you know, the entire industry is looking forward to moving from merely selling products to being, you know, customer friendly and client focused, I think these awards are a very nice thing to do. I think it's an extremely important award. I think just a platform to build, bring all the financial advisors together to uh, discuss and acknowledge their contribution to the sector uh, is, uh, I think, an extremely important thing to do uh, for the industry as a whole. From whatever I hear from financial advisors, they have like high regard for this award. Um, they feel that it's very prestigious. It's uh, because it's not just based on some quantitative parameters as to how big their business is, what's the EUM size, but it also considers a lot of qualitative inputs around saying that how do they interact with their customers, what, what's their relationship model, um, what's their support structure, and so on. So from a holistic point of view, uh, at least the jury tries to assess these parameters and come up with uh, worthy uh, winners. The number of customers active for 94,000. How much will be uh, Indian KBC? It, it, it should be a 75 55 ratio. 75 and 75 will be. Yes, yes. You have a conscious plan, what annual plan, and then you push through. That's, that, that, that last year it was 14,000. You reach a market share of 2.89%. Now this year we are targeting 3.5%. We are in the for in actually what we uh, focus on rather more uh -huh. is, as I said, the inputs. Actually, experiences like this is always phenomenal. One thing what I can say is that it's not only a learning opportunity for us as a financial distributor, but it's always a learning opportunity in the overall holistic curve. What I mean by this is that we had had a phenomenal experience in terms of in front of jury that what the business that we are in, as we had represented our business, we bifurcated what exactly what we do 
and their questions, their insights is, will be really helpful for us to grow in the business that we are doing in terms of regulations, in terms of what client centricity that we do. So all these things aspects help not only as the wealth distributors for us, but also in an overall perspective for the client as well as the financial investments that we are into. So you know, all in all, I would say that yes, it was a great experience to come into it. I think it is one of the biggest platforms and uh, one of the most reputed agencies which is today assessing uh, the financial advisors on various parameters. So it adds uh, to a lot of credibility to whatever you are doing. And uh, let me say, because this is my fourth time, that this has been a learning process for us also. Well, it feels great to be here because I think it does bring in a lot of visibility, for one. And um, I think seeing women more often on TV, especially in this space, is hopefully get more women thinking about money. Uh, getting into the advisory business because one thing I'm personally not very comfortable with is, is a huge skew of ownership of wealth towards men. The point here is when women start thinking about money, working towards saving it, there will be all, a lot more ownership of women. Second is that when you look at equity as an asset class, it lends itself for people who are holding for a long time and women tend to do that. They are long term investors. So women and equity is something is a very natural fit but sadly we don't uh, have that in India. So. One of the uh, spaces that we are working towards is to make that happen. It's a super SNI. Normal definition. <laughs> SNI is what? But we could start for less. See, the point is that if we have somebody who has that kind of money to invest, we would start him off for a much lower amount and build him up as we go. Our client size would be around 120, but they are varying sizes. They have, you know, the, the spread is very huge in terms of one being very large and the other being. Clients managed by this. Yes. Total AEM will be how much? It's around 194. These awards which were instituted a couple of years back and we have seen uh, quite a few additions you know, over these years have evolved extremely well. If we look at the number of people who apply each year and also the manner in which the winners display it, it very clearly demonstrates that these awards are really looked up to. The participants, the contestants, all of most of them have done exceedingly well and they have demonstrated their willingness, ability and commitment to upgrade their skills, adoption of technology and disclosures and serving the, their clients uh, more uh, efficiently. It's time for a very short break, but don't go anywhere because when we return, we take a look at the evaluation process and the parameters for the contestants battling for their winning titles in the Financial Advisor Awards 2014-15. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Financial Advisor Awards 2014-15 presented by UTI Mutual Fund and CNBC TV18. The jury round saw 52 teams presenting their proposals to the judges who evaluated the pitches on quantitative and qualitative parameters across 20 categories. Take a look. The panel of 12 judges were faced with the challenging task of evaluating the talented nominees to decide who has excelled across various categories. The panelists were divided into four rooms, catering to different categories of nominations. The candidates were each given a minimum of 20 minutes to present to the jury, followed by a testing Q&A session. We don't charge any fee for... So we don't charge any upfront fee, any advisory fee. We also cover The various parameters for evaluation included quantitative parameters, assets under management, asset profile, investor accounts, number of investment advisors, and number of products offered, as well as qualitative parameters, including educational or professional qualifications, experience, client servicing, scope of services, forms of compensation, quality of research and advice based on feedback from investor sample and quality of service based on feedback from investor sample. Broadly, uh, the manner in which uh, one is looking to really uh, judge these participants and what one is looking for has always been uh, the 
quality of advice and how much value addition uh, especially uh, which these uh, participants are doing to their uh, clients. But I think one important criterion which one has been uh, looking to give a little bit of more importance over the years has been uh, the uh, investor education initiatives. How conscious are these participants of the uh, possibility of a mis-selling? How much are they really into it for their clients and not for themselves? So what we are really looking for are firms who put their clients before themselves and who try to manage this conflict or try to manage the um, uh, the inherent uh, you know difference between the two so i think that's something which increasingly we've been giving more weightage to over the years here i found that the process was very very scientific and it was like virtually going through a, a college or a school degree exam in some sense in terms of the uh, efficiency of the or the thoroughness with which one had to actually evaluate all of that and also the different kind of uh, attributes some of them were quantitative, but most of them was also qualitative. So you have to actually look at the kind of presentation, what the ethos beyond it is, look at the objectives, look at how they are delivering. So you have to actually look at so many parameters. So it, this actually made it very, very interesting for me. And it was not something which I actually had expected at the start of the day. But probably I'm going wiser by the end of the day. Two areas were new. One was in relation focus of the advisors to the family office which is something starkly different than earlier years, which, has, which is emerging as a major area. The second, which we are looking at is as extensive use of the quantitative techniques. I think both of them, I thought, were really good. It's a tough one. one and do, they, these two are not comparable. One guy is completely emerging. You know, he's just got 500 crores of, and 40, 400 families. This guy has got actually 500 families. But no, these are, say, UM is 4,500. Jury was very good and uh, they asked the right question because sometimes the depth of business is so deep and you are not able to present the things specifically on the presentation because presentation is very small, 20 minutes. How can you just, uh, so they asked very fine question which I was also very pleasantly surprised. They asked the question where I also wanted to give detail and they asked those questions. The, the jury was very good and presentation was very well and uh, they asked the right question that is more important uh, to you know to get contented with the presentation the jury was great uh, they were it was a very interactive presentation so it wasn't like that we were just presenting and they were listening so and there wasn't like that you present first and then you have the q and a round so question and answers were interspersed during the presentation so i think it went off very well and we are hopeful of winning again this year i think Rank almost the same. Actually, first and second both almost the same. Yeah. So we give um, what uh, out of 15, uh, we give about 40 percent. I believe there were some 37,000 or 35,000 nominations uh, this year, which were uh, evaluated using a set of quantitative and qualitative criteria, and across. Um, each of the categories, about two or three of the nominated uh, players were selected to come in for the presentation. Uh, the presentation and the jury uh, process was also very well structured. Uh, I think for each category, there were um, a defined set of parameters with the weightages, and uh, we did go down each of those parameters, um, you know, um, score the candidates across each of those parameters, and therefore came up with a consolidated score, which was then used to sort of obviously rank the uh, rank the players. We have to create a, a, a new section of investor education. We have one. We have issues across categories. So maybe we should just give her more marks on investor education so that she qualifies. We are talking of first. First one, uh, yeah, yeah. And the second one, we should consider uh, along with the other. But there is a separate category for South. So that way, Prun and Affluence are in the South category. The category I judged was uh, for the IFA community across the four zones, north, south, east, and west. Uh, and there was also the, uh, the women category. The two women in particular in the, in the women IFA category were absolutely inspiring. The methodology that we used uh, within the jury to sort of come out with the results were across three or four parameters. I think number one, we looked at uh, investor education and financial deepening. 
I think second, we looked at the quality of advice, uh, which is quite important. It is not only about just doing transactions. Third thing that we also looked at was uh, some of the systems and the processes that they have put in place. We also looked at what is the span of control. So those are some of the aspects that we looked at. But overall, I would say uh, advisory capability, uh, investor education, uh, and systems and processes that people have put in place. On that note, it's time for a very short break. But when we return, we get a glimpse at the nominee pitches and the various award categories that are to be expected at the Financial Advisor Awards 2014-15 presented by UTI Mutual Fund and CNBC TV18. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Financial Advisor Awards 2014-15 presented by UTI Mutual Fund and CNBC TV18. Let's now take a quick look at some of the pitches by the nominees during the jury round and the various categories that each team is battling to prevail in. Each candidate was prepared well with respect to the category that they were nominated for. This year, the categories for the Financial Advisor Awards featured Best Performing National Financial Advisor Retail, Best Performing National Financial Advisor Institutional, Best Performing National Financial Advisor Wealth Distributor NRI category, Best Performing Regional Financial Advisor North, South, East and West, Best Performing National Financial Advisor Online, Best Performing National Financial Advisor Equity Broker, Best Performing Individual Financial Advisor, Mega Cities North, South, East, West, Best Performing Bank, PSU, Best Performing Bank, Private, Best Performing Bank, Foreign, Best Performing Individual Financial Advisor, Women, National Level, Best Performing Individual Financial Advisor, Cities, Tier 2, North, West, South, Best Performing Individual Financial Advisor, Up Country, North, South, East and West, Best Performing National Financial Advisor Wealth Distributor and Best Performing National Individual Financial Advisor. This is about my business. We are trying to understand what the client's capacity of taking risk is or capacity of not taking risks and taking them across the entire spectrum right from a liquid fund to aggressive sector funds. We manage over 650 crores of assets across 325 clients. Portfolio sizes begin from 1 crore. Average portfolio size is close to 5 crores and some of the portfolios are 30-40 crores. We will cover on the ethics of mainly 3 pillars. We will clarify on those on the slides. Goal orientation, diversification and professional management. All my clients, be a 1000 rupee client or a 1 lakh or a 1 crore, what is his goal? We start with discussion only, then we will go to the next thing. That is my main ethics. It's a big recognition actually because Anybody who is getting this award, first is for an organization like us, it elevates the sales team completely. There's a big motivation that happens. We celebrate this moment. Second, all our clients give a lot of value to us. They give a respect that we are certified now. We are winners of some certification or some award. So these are very, very important things for us and uh, we really cherish this. Uh, because of this award, we get a good, uh, we get a certain type of motivation uh, to grow a little faster. Uh, to grow uh, in terms of, uh, like an example, uh, we expanded, uh, uh, we are expanding internationally now. Uh, we have strengthened our IT systems. We have strengthened a lot of things. Uh, so that gives us motivation to do uh, better and better and challenge us every time. I think uh, it's not about differentiating, but adding a significant value to your customer. I think a customer-focused approach and tailoring your entire value chain to see that it delivers good economic value for your customers is something that has helped us generate success in our business. Well, it's very, very important. A, because as an industry, we need recognition. And this, this is one of the initiatives which brings about significant recognition. It also brings about an aspiration for all of us to do better. It also brings about an aspiration for young people to join our industry. And because this is a people's business, and the more initiatives like this, we'll be able to get more talented and energetic young people joining this industry. So it's very important. 
in 14-15 it was 93 crores and uh, revenue generated was 15 lakhs. That is also a growth of 92% and 114 crores. Do you have a tie up with some? Yeah, I gave back my uh, card. I had opted for the BSE card, but then you turn out to be a broker, it takes too much time. So I have a tie up with Federal Reserve. I think the presentations were very, very good. In fact, over the years we have seen that uh, many of these entities are, are sort of repeat nominations. They come, you know, each year and uh, the presentations have evolved, they become very focused. But what's important in terms of change really is that the change we see in their approach to do business is largely driven by the environment. It's very difficult for the jury to really identify a winner. Um, and the real heartening thing is that people are not just basing the growth on just a market euphoria. They really want to be client-centric. They want to give the best thing to their clients. They want to build long-term trust really, trust-based relationship. And from that point of view, it's been a really exciting day. It's very important uh, for the morale of the uh, financial in, uh, advisor industry, and uh, it'll be uh, you know good to you know continue having this uh, in future, and uh, you know look forward to having more and more uh, participation from these players uh, going forward. The award has grown in stature. The importance that people uh, accord to this award, whether in terms of an investor or whether in terms of the actual advisor who uh, you know showcases the award to his existing or prospective clients. So to that extent, the uh, you know the whole process has has evolved. A recognition like this award certainly uh, is a booster to their morale and. Uh, a feeling of, you know, uh, yes, I have been recognized, my work has been accepted, my hard work is recognized, is something important and useful to the community. With the final stages of deliberation underway and the jury members painstakingly making their decisions, the stage is set for the Financial Advisor Awards. Who will achieve the title of the best financial advisor? For all this and more, stay tuned to the channel and catch the Financial Advisor Awards 2014-15 presented by UTI Mutual Fund and CNBC TV18. Until then, many thanks for watching. Innovate. Enable.